Hey gamers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire, and today I'm going to show you how to solo Metro X Tokyo and Osaka. This is a really fun roll and write in which you are trying to fill in maps of Japanese subway stations. The game comes with some rules, some cool pencils, and a couple of score pads, one for Osaka and one for Tokyo. So you can play several sheets on each of the subway maps. I've actually made some laminated copies that I can keep for the long run, but today we're gonna do a normal map of Tokyo just on regular paper, and we're gonna do it with a pen, which will hopefully be dark enough for y'all to see. All you need to play Metro X is your map sheet, a writing utensil, and this deck of cards. Even though this is a roll and write, it's actually more of a flip cards and write game. So as we flip cards, we'll have values that we're gonna to try to fill in in these subway stations. The ultimate goal of this game is to complete as many lines as possible and generally to fill in as much of this map as possible. However, it's going to be a lot harder than you would think. First of all, it's actually, um, there, there aren't that many options for each line. So these are what are called indicator spaces. So the numbers that we will turn over on these cards, this station, this, uh, this line, the Fukutoshin line, you can only put two numbers towards this line. You can only put two numbers towards the Yurakucho line. Three, 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 two, two, three, three. So we have very limited options. For example, I might not want to put a couple of twos in here because there's no way I'm going to completely finish this line that way. But it depends on what I draw in terms of cards. I may be stuck putting not ideal numbers on my train lines. Not only do I have limited options in terms of my indicator spaces, but I'm also going to have to be careful about how far I advance certain lines before I advance other ones. Because you have to start at the beginning of each line in order to get to the end. Sounds obvious, but I mean, I can't start working on a line halfway through. And even if I had a four over here and I wanted to make a bunch of progress on a line, I actually have to stop if I'm filling in spaces uh, along one of my subway lines and then I bump into a space that I've already filled in with either a station or a number. So let's go ahead and play and see how it turns out. Um, we should maybe name it, uh, let's just call it Snakes on the Train. It's not like a very logical train name, but we're gonna go with it. Cause names are fun. Apologies for my horrible handwriting. All right, so now we're gonna flip our first card and we're gonna see what our options are. So our first card is gonna be, ah, a four. So what that means is that I can choose to fill in four squares along any of these uh, any of these lines. The map is totally open to me at this point, so let's figure out what I should do. I think what I'm gonna do this time is hedge my bets. I want to work with the Maranucci line, and I'm gonna put a four here in my indicator space, so one of those three spaces is now full. And I'm gonna go one, two, three, four. So now I've filled in four spaces along this line. I'm glad that I stopped here, however, because let's say that I had gone into this space. If I were working on this line, for example, I would have to stop when I hit my own mark on the red line where it intersected with another line. So by filling in just these four, I've kind of hedged my bets for future turns depending on what lines I end up wanting to really work on and finish. All right, so let's flip another card. Oh wow, that was early. Okay, so this is a six. What happens when you hit a six is that you play the six, then you have to reshuffle the entire deck and start again. So hitting it early, I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter, but you know, it, it can change the game because it puts some cards back into circulation or keeps you from ever hitting certain cards. So let's decide what to do with this six. I think I'm gonna do something risky. I'm gonna go ahead and put the six, ooh, this is risky. I'm gonna go ahead and put it here on the Numboku line. That means I can go one, two, three, four, five, six. So for illustrative purposes, I've done this so I can show you what this means is that if I wanna add a number to the red line, I'm gonna bump into one of the other marks that I've made before I can do that. So there are some cards that allow you to skip, but for now, I'm a little bit stuck, or I can work on this line to try to complete it in another way but I'm not gonna be able to just simply advance my work on the red line right now because the work that I've done on this Namboku line is actually blocking it, which is what I want you guys to see. So now we're actually just gonna reshuffle the whole deck and get back to it. All right, so we've reshuffled and let's draw another card. 
All right, so this time we have a five. Man, I'm getting the big ones this time. That's weird. So let's figure out where to put it. We will not be putting it here because it's a waste because if I put one here, I have to stop when I hit my next mark. So the red line is definitely out. Let's see what else we can do. So let's go ahead and get some work done down here on the Habia line. So let's put this five here and we'll go one, two, three, four, get a little more work on that red line done, five. So that's what we're gonna try. Just so you know, I don't typically score very high at this game, so we'll see what happens. So let's flip another card. Ah, so this is a two skip. So what that means is that I can advance my interests along a line and I can skip over marks that I've already made. So this one I am gonna go ahead and put on the Marnergy line. So I'm gonna put this two skip here. So I'm gonna go one, two. So I've actually made some good progress on this line. So let's flip another card and see what we get. Okay, so this time we got a three. So let's figure out where is the best place to put it. I think what may be the best actually. So these lines intersect for a little bit, so that's great. I'm gonna go ahead and put that three right here on this purple line so that I can go one, two, three. Because see how it connects me with work that I've already done? That way, if I want to put another card into the purple line at some point, I've already connected it up and I don't have a bunch of nasty little skips in there. So let's do another one. Aha, we got another skip, another skip two. That's less helpful this time. So let's think about where we can put it that's just actually a good place to put two. One place it might be good actually is right here. Oh, that's nasty. So I've actually been blocking off this green line a little bit. This may be one of the lines that I just give up for lost. So you're not actually gonna complete all the train lines in any of these games, um, unless you get really, really lucky. So you have to choose where you're gonna put stuff. So let's think about that. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and just tuck this two right in here. I don't actually think I'm gonna finish the Chiyoda line, but will give me options to move along it a little further, at least fill up some squares. All right, so let's go ahead and flip another card. Okay, so this time we got another three. This uh, Fukutoshi line is looking pretty good already, so why don't we put this three here and we'll start working towards the end of that line. As you can see, these uh, run together for a little bit, so you can kind of portion your numbers out to make it easier to hit your targets between the two of them. All right, so let's, aha. So here's an interesting card. This is a star. And what it is good for is it's for scoring bonus points if you can put it in a good intersection. So let's think about whether that's something that I'd really like to do. So basically what's gonna happen is wherever I put this star, I'm gonna get two points for every line that passes through that space. So I can either put it in a heavy intersection line but use up one of these um, spaces, these indicator spaces, or I can try to use it just to stick it somewhere so I can keep getting work done on other train lines. So it's just a matter of what I'm choosing to do with the star. Do I use it for big points now, or do I use it as one space to maybe fill in something awkward like right here? So let's see. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go ahead and put it here in the Namboku line and hope that I manage to get away with filling everything in. But there are two lines that touch here, so it's going to be worth four points. So good thing to keep an eye on there on the map. So let's flip another card. Aha, this time I got four. That's exciting. Let's see where I should put it. So I think it's about time we did something with the Tozai line. So we're gonna go ahead and put the four right here and go one, two, three, four. This is helping me kind of shape this line up really nicely because I have space for one more number on it. So now if I pull a five, I can finish. We'll see what happens. Next card, a three. So let's see, what would be a good spot for three? All right, so I think what I'm gonna do is hope that I can build these other lines out and I'm gonna put the three here. So we'll go one, two, three. That doesn't seem like too bad of an idea. All right, so let's flip another card. Ah, it's the six again. So we'll put a six somewhere and we'll reshuffle the whole thing. So I think what I'm gonna do, do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use this six to finish off this red line. Cause it'll go one, two, 
three, four, five. So I overshot slightly, but I don't feel over, I don't feel too bad about that. I think that's going to be just fine. Um, so I finished this line, and what that's going to mean is that I get to circle this five right here on the map. So when you are playing with more than one person, the first person to finish the line is the one who scores the higher number, and then later finishers score the lower number. However, when you're playing a one-player game, you score the higher number no matter what, and then you just try to get the highest score that you can. So now we're going to shuffle everything up and start again. All right, ready to rock again. Let's see what we get. Oh, yay. Okay, so we got the highly valued skip three. So I'm actually going to use it right here. I'm going to put a three here. I'm going to do one, two, three, which is going to put me in position to finish this line on a future turn. And also I'm very close on this one as well. So that's really good. Ah, we got a five. Okay, where do I want to put that? Let's think. All right, so the only place I'm going to get the most out of that five is probably the Habia line. So here, I I need four to finish. So I could just I could just blow it and finish this line, maybe, or I can try to get further along this gray line. Um, I can't do the orange line because I'm going to run into a one spot here, and I don't want to like waste waste space. Same with the green line, that's not going to work out too hot. The red one's finished. I only need two to finish this line. I only need three to finish this line, and I want to use my five really well. So that's going to leave it for either advance my way along the gray or um, finish the Namboku line. Since I'm not in a huge hurry, I'm going to go ahead and spin it here on the Hibiya. We're going to go one, two, three, four, five. So with all these intersections, the orange line is probably lost, but we've made some decent progress on the blue this way. I don't think I'll be able to finish that one either. Sadly, yeah, one, two, three, four. If I get a six, I can finish the blue. So we'll kind of see what comes up. Let's see our next card. Aha, a free. So the free is actually great. What it lets you do is put a free thing anywhere without having to actually write it in one of these indicator spaces. So now I should just figure out what it is I might like to connect. The orange just has too many interruptions. I think that, that one's just dead. Hmm. The best place to put it, I think, might be here on this, uh, the Chiyoda line. Because that way, like, I have a good potential to finish because I still have two indicator spaces here and only five spots. Four spots. Five spots. Yeah, five. So that's good. And it'll help me finish the gray off as well. So I think that was probably my best call. All right, so this time we got to skip two. But I don't really want to skip anything at the moment. I mean, I could try with the orange. Ooh, that's tempting. Let's think about this. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to put it right here in the orange because I haven't put anything in there yet. I've got so much of it filled out. So we can go one, two. And that actually fills in the gaps that were in this line, which is pretty cool because it puts me within, within finishing striking distance on that. I like that. All right, so let's flip our next card. Aha, a three. So the three is great. I can use it in multiple situations. Um, actually, since I can, I'm gonna go ahead and use it to finish this orange line. So one, two, three, and this puppy is done. So that, li that line is all over with, that's awesome. All right, so let's pull another card. Okay, so this time we got a four. Oh, that's perfect. I'll put it right here on the Nimboku line and do one, two. Oh, I should have done it over on the green. Oh, well, four. But that one is done, so I've got four points. I should have finished the Chiyoda up here because it would have helped with the gray line, but eh, I made a mistake, it's fine. It's five spots anyway. Okay, next. Okay, so this time I got another three. Ooh. So what would I like to do with that? I can finish off this line. That'd be pretty good. Yeah, let's just go ahead and finish that line. 
So we're gonna finish off the Yarakucho. Sorry about that guys, uh, my memory card got full and I lost a bunch of stuff. Basically I played some more cards and I ended up filling up the Fukutoshin line and I made some other progress in places that I actually can't remember because I was just yakking away to y'all. Not a care in the world, having no clue that my uh, memory card had just filled up. I'm sorry about that. All right, so let's keep playing. Oh, a star. I'm not really all that excited to see the star because I don't have any intersections that I want to put anything in. I think what I'm gonna do is since there's pretty much no way I'm gonna finish this purple line anyway, I'm just gonna go ahead and put the star here and score a two right there and just waste it because I don't have any great intersections and I'm really hoping to sneak some of these lines, like I'm hoping to finish. So we're gonna, some, some more of these, so we'll see what I can do. All right, so here we got a three. Okay, I think what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put it, I'm gonna put it, let's see, I'm gonna put it here on the Chiyoda line. So I can go one, two, three. That way um, I'm gonna be able to finish off both that line and the gray line with very little effort from me. That's really good. Okay, so now we get a four. We're at the point where I'm really just hoping to hit the six and finish off the blue. So we're gonna just delay until we can see if we can get it or not. I think that's what we're gonna do. Cause you know, no guts, no glory. So we're gonna just waste that four here and we're gonna finish the Hibia line. Oh God dang it. Oh, actually that worked out fine. So I only need one more spot on the green line. So I could just put the star here and get another two here which is perhaps not the maximum for scores, but I'm just hoping this next card is a six. This is my last open spot. If I hit a six, I'm gonna finish the line. If I don't, oh, well, I didn't finish the line. Oh, no way! Whoa! Oh my God, okay, so I hit a six on the last turn of the game. I've never been this lucky in this game before, ever. Dude! Okay, so we finished off the Tozai line and we finished off the Chiyoda line. That was amazing. This is the best game of Metro X I have ever played. I'm so glad I caught this on camera, holy crap. All right, so let's score this puppy. This is gonna be the biggest score I've ever gotten, ever, ever, ever. I normally score like in the low 30s. Okay, so this spot is gonna be for um, completed lines. It's gonna be two plus four for six, plus seven for 13, plus five for 18, plus four for 22, plus five for 27, plus six for 33, plus four for 37. Wow. All right, so this next little square is for um, all the points that you get from intersections. So for me, that's four, two, and two for a total of eight. And then you score negative points for the number of squares that are empty on the map. So for me, that's only one, two, three. That has never happened to me before. Okay, so let's find the card and figure out what my penalty is. So actually, there is no penalty. So for if you have zero to five empty spaces, you score a zero, and then you start getting minuses for six and up. So. Let me get real with y'all. I've totally had like 14 empty spaces of this map before. This was like a miraculous game. So don't feel bad if you're not scoring like this because I don't normally score like this. So there were three empty spots for a zero penalty. So my total points were gonna be 37 plus eight, which is gonna be 45. So in the rules, that has a meaning, and let's see what it is. So this time I got a 40 to 49, 
You possess professional skill level. Yeah, I do. All right, so if I can ever break 50, it means that I'm either a genius or I have unspeakably good luck. But honestly, I'll consider a 45 unspeakably good luck at this game. Um, this was fun. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. I think Metro X is super enjoyable. It's so easy to teach. It's so easy to play. Um, you can take it to a restaurant. You can play it at lunch in your classroom, which I do often with students now. It's just a really fun, portable game. The only thing that it's not, sadly, is cheap because it is a Japanese import, so it's going to cost you if you want a copy. But other than that, it is an awesome game. I never had a dull moment with it, and I highly recommend it for solo play. So, happy gaming.